Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special head-to-head -head battle. I'm excited. We're going to put Castle Arts gold pencils, which we've been talking about for the last couple weeks here on our channel, up against the mighty Faber-Castell Polychromos. <laughs> we have a really special worksheet that we're going to use for this head-to-head -head battle. Links to all everything you need, products and everything will be in the video description. We are not a sponsored channel. I purchased all these products. Before we get started with the head-to-head -head battle though, I need to tell you about our massive giveaway. I love a good giveaway and this one is extra good. It's massive, it's huge and it ends January 26th and we're going to announce the winner on January 27th. What what do you get if you win this giant prize? Well, you get the gold pencils, you get the Castle Arts pastel tints, <laughs> thank you, we've got an assistant here, <laughs> you get the Castle Arts metallics, and you get this awesome giant set of soft touch pencils. That's 336 Castle Arts gold and soft touch color pencils. Holy cow. And to help you with all of these pencils, or at least some of them, we also have this as part of the giveaway. You're going to get a tritone worksheet book to help you organize and color scheme the beautiful soft touch collection. It's so cool. This one's for Black Widow because we don't have this, the soft touch ones yet, but it's coming. We've been working hours and hours to get the pencils in the perfect order, the perfect combinations. It's an awesome giveaway. Good luck everyone. Visit the link in the video description and get your entries in. Now one more item of business before we get to this head-to-head -head battle. I want to tell you about all the resources. If you are like me and you are collecting the Castle Arts pencils, then you need help getting them into a good color order and in a way that you can work with them quick and easy. So we have both both free and paid resources for the Castle Arts. Now, the free ones are ready for you, and here they are. You got swatch charts. So we've made an individual swatch chart for the metallic pencils, for the pastel tint pencils, and for the gold pencils. That's all 120 on one page and for the soft touch pencils. We're working on more resources, one of which is the paid tritone worksheet book that will not be Black Widow, it will be Castle Art Soft Touch. And it's going to give you so many resources and things to help you with your Castle Art Soft Touch pencils. Now also, just so you know, we are planning on working the pastel tints into this tritone worksheet system. So if you want to, I would highly recommend purchasing or winning the giveaway, <laughs> purchasing the whole 120 soft touch and the pastel tints, because as we've been working with them side by side, this set definitely needs this set to get you some really good, beautiful blends from light all the way to dark. Let's get into this head-to-head -head battle. And to help us, I have a really cool two-page worksheet that I'm gonna be working through. This is it right here. Now, we have made this accessible to our paid members, and it's just five bucks a month to come on over to Coloring Bliss and become a paid member. For that five bucks, you get hundreds, I'm not, exaggerating <laughs> hundreds of coloring pages and tons of resources like this one right here, which is a two page scoring page and it helps you look at two different brands. And I highly recommend you download this one and work through this for yourself. As we go through it, you're going to see, for instance, first thing, availability in your area. The things I'm going to be scoring in this head to head battle all pertain to me here in Utah, United States of America, January 2022. All of these things may be different if you're in a different country or it's a different time of year even. So that's my recommendation is get your hands on this worksheet so that you can do your own head-to-head -head battle and decisions score them yourself. But you're here to see me do my battle and see where I come up, which brand's going to be better, the Polychromos or the Castle Art Gold. So I'm going to fill out a couple things and then we'll start the tests. Look at all the fun tests we get to do. 
All right, so I've got the two brands listed at the top. We're going to go right into the testing to, for fun here to get started. First thing I need to do is pick out 10 colors and we're gonna swatch 10 polychromos and 10 gold. For these 10 color swatches, we try to pick a variety of colors across the color wheel, including a gray and a relatively neutral brown. All right, I have 10 colors for each line of color pencils and off to the side I also have a black and a white because we're going to go in and look at the blacks and whites here in a second. This test is so good because you color 10 of this one kind on one side and then you color 10 of the other kind and you get to feel all the pencils and kind of start to feel the differences between the two. Plus what we get to look at here is the color variety, the strength of the colors. We're not really doing like this red is better than this red kind of thing because they're just two different reds. Um, but what we are looking at is, did they color down with a nice saturated full color? So, you know, it would have an impact for when you're doing your art. I'll bring that up and let you look. I also was taking note of crumbs and if any tips broke, all those kinds of things as I am coloring all along, I'm going to be doing that. One more thing I want to mention, we are doing the testing on our awesome color pencil paper so that it gives them the best advantage possible during these tests. Okay, I'm going to do number two and three, which is basically testing our black and white pencils to see how they perform. So I'll give you sort of my overall feelings um, comparatively here in a second when we go to the first page. That's when we're going to oh, talk about the different um, results here. Uh, the next test on number four is we want to see how visible the colors are on black. So I'm going to pick a few of these colors that I have swatched above and I just like I did here on number two, I'm going to fill in these boxes with a black alcohol marker and this will give me a black surface to lay the colors on. Now alcohol marker is kind of important for this. If you use a water-based marker it can change the texture which would change the performance of your color pencils. I need to refill this marker. <laughs> or you could you could also cut use a out, sharpie, you could, you could stick in a piece paper. of black paper, whatever works for your situation. So let me pick a few colors and let's see how they look on black. Now before we move on to number five, I just wanted to show you the crumb difference. We have an actual crumb test here in a minute, but on black is usually a really good way to see the crumbs. So you can see here, this is the Castle Arts gold versus the crumb amount. That's what I'm pointing out here of the polychromos, but we'll do an actual crumb test here in just a second. Next test, we're doing layering. We're gonna fill the box with the color of choice and do lots of layers, and we're going to count the layers until it's fully covered. So this is all about light layers, see how these perform. Next test we get to perform is number six, the crumbs. So we're actually looking at um, number seven as well here, but we're going to use these three squares per color. So we're gonna fill each box with the color of our choice, noting the amount of crumbs. And you notice here we have light pressure, medium pressure, and heavy pressure. We're going to sharpen each pencil before we begin into the box to give them equal, um, advantage and disadvantage, depending on the results here. So I think I'm gonna use red this time. 
So I'm going to sharpen up both threads and we'll run the test and I'll show you the results here in a second. All right, I'm working on sharpening up the reds for test number six and we had a problem. So this is the Castle Arts red pencil. I sharpened with the same sharpener. This is um, a standard Coombe sharpener with a little bling added to it by my son, but it's uh, just a standard Coombe sharpener. And I'm following all the rules, holding the pencil still, and rotating the sharpener. Oh, the lead is caught in there. Gotta get that out. So, um, breakage is something that I'm going to have to address. Um, yeah, we'll talk about breakage, I guess, when we go to the actual scoring segment of this process. Okay, this test we actually do have to look at and score it now, the number six one, because I'm gonna be brushing off the crumbs here for test number seven. So I'm gonna let you look and see, here is the polychromos pencil in three different pressures. And over here we have the Castle Arts Gold pencil in the three different pressures. And there is a remarkable amount of crumbs happening here. Crumbs bother me. <laughs> so that's why it's kind of a big deal to me. Crumbs make your work messy. You can contaminate colors into different color sections if you're not um, controlling the crumbs. So it's not necessarily a deal breaker having a crummy pencil, but it is a property that you need to be aware of so that you can be prepared. For instance, I have a cheap little blush brush that I use to get rid of all of the crumbs before I move on to a new color if I'm working with a crummy um, formula like this. So now we just carefully brush off the crumbs from both sides and do test seven, which is a pigment transfer. After test six, clean off the crumbs, rub your thumb across each box and note the pigment transfer. So I'll use my right thumb for the polychromos and my left thumb for the gold. So we're going to do that test here and just take a little peeky peeky. I don't see anything. Now this test is important to me too. I don't see maybe a teeny bit. Um, this test is kind of important to me because a lot of pencils um, say they are transfer proof. So we are proving that, uh, you know, there's not enough here that I would be like, oh, I rubbed my hand across a red swatch. So <laughs> that's pretty impressive polychromos. Okay, now we'll do this side. So fresh, clean thumb. There's the first one. Nothing significant. Here's the second one. Nothing significant. This has got pen on it. <laughs> and the third one. Nothing significant. So both did very well with the transfer test. Oh, can you see? There. <laughs> this side is the Castle Arts Gold. And this side was the Polychromos. Many things. The Polychromos a little bit more? Maybe a little bit more on Polychromos. Okay, next test is number eight. And for this one, we need to check the water solubility. These pencils are not water soluble, soluble pencils, but as we have tested and found in the past, some brands, the binders or whatever, um, are semi water soluble and it will leak some of the colors. This is important to know because if you're working with your color pencils with another medium like um, watercolors or a water um, based marker. You need to know if that pencil is going to stay put or does it have a property where it's going to release some of its color and bleed out. Neither one is bad or good, but it's a property that might be important to you. So that's why we test it. For this one, I want to use violet. For step number nine, we need to check how these pencils blend. And the best way I know to do it is with Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds. It's a great beginner technique to help you learn how to blend pencils. 
Now we have a link to the a video where I teach this rule. So if you want to learn more specifically how to use it, check out the link or you can come on over to Coloring Bliss and become a Bliss partner. We have hundreds of hours of coloring workshops and tutorials and we spend a lot of time teaching blending both for beginners and advanced colorists. So come on over, become a Bliss partner and learn how to blend. One more thing I wanted to do for you at home is let you hear the sound of these pencils on the paper. So I'm going to sharpen up these two greens and we'll just do a little green swatch right here and here and let you hear how these pencils sound across the paper. Okay, first one for you to hear is the polychromos. That's light to medium pressure. Now I'll do heavy pressure. Okay, now we'll listen to the castle arts. Light to medium, now we'll do heavy. Hopefully you could hear the difference between these two brands. This one to me feels and colors out a lot scratchier. Now the fun part. We're going to take all these tests that we just performed and we're going to do some scoring here on the first page of this worksheet, which is our scorecard. Let's see how they score. Okay, so um, I've got Steve here with me so he can help me think this through and be as objective and fair as possible. So the very first thing I'm going to think about is availability in our area. So I'm going to give a X to the winner, whether it's left or right, and then I guess if I ever feel like it's a tie, we could do an X in the middle, whatever you want to do with your scoring. Availability in my area, both brands are very readily available. Polychromos is a little bit more available. I can get it at, um, sometimes I see them at the craft stores like Hobby Lobby and Michaels, and I can get them at my Dick Blick shop, and no, I haven't seen them in Walmart. It's Prismacolor that I've seen in Walmart. So as far as availability in my area, I could actually drive to a store and pick up some polychromos, which I couldn't with cold castle arts. So I'm going to give the score to polychromos for availability in my area. Best price value in our area. Okay, I checked today as of January something something 2022. <laughs> Polychromos full set is on sale on Amazon. Yes, Amazon for $230 for the whole 120 set. Now the Castle Art Gold right now on Amazon is $65. Now, it's kind of important for me to pick just a time and one single supplier because then we can, you know, apples to apples. But having said that, remember to shop deals, you guys. Castle Arts especially, I've seen a lot of great deals both on Amazon and on their website. Little heads up. Obvious winner here as far as the price. Castle Arts gets the win here for me in my area. Okay, now the next one is best quality packaging. Now this is a little tricky. Will you have me my Castle Art set? This set right here is what we ordered and it came in a lovely canvas bag. And I've been quite impressed with this bag so far. There was, uh, if you go back and watch my unboxing, I note a few things like the zipper was having a problem in the beginning and there was a little sewing issue, but all doesn't really matter at this point. It's working really well. Sorry, all you're seeing is a big black blob. <laughs> there you go. Um, Castle Arts, the full set also comes in a tin, which I haven't seen, so I can't compare tins to tins. Polychromos come in a nice tin as well. 
This is my tin that I originally purchased. This was the 60 set, and then we bought the rest of the set on open stock, is how I came across these. Let's take a little peek here inside this tin. It has some really nice trays that have these pinchies to lift them in and out. So I've never seen the 120 tin to know if, how different it is, but the polychromos tins work beautifully and the trays actually do come in and out and they're not super wimpy but mm, they're your normal plastic tins and they fit in here really well just like that. So who am I going to give the score to? What do you think Steve? I don't know I would assume that the Castle Arts tin for the gold is similar to their recent tins for yeah so metallic. this is a tin for castle arts metallic which i've shown here recently and i like the tin itself but the trays on these smaller ones don't fit in here very well they come in and out um they get stuck as you see they do have an elastic cord so there's pros and cons to both Let's see they just don't there <laughs> well, and I guess maybe on that one you just skip it because you can't... I yeah. mean, you know they both come in tins. They're probably just... I know. I'm going to give them each an X, which means they both have quality packaging. How's that for... There you go. <laughs> so there's not one where I'm like, oh, this is just terrible and that one's way better. They both do good. Next one, open stock availability. Polychromos are available open stock, but Castle Arts aren't. So... Polychromos for the win. Pencil appearance and info. Let's take a look at the red violet. There's a red violet here in the polychromos and a red violet in the Castle Arts. So I think both pencils are a good looking pencil. They both have rounded on the ends. They both have their brand names. This one here has the color name and number right here um, in the dreaded metallic, but it's a nice big print. So even though it is metallic, you can hit it in the right light and then read it relatively well. So as far as appearance, I think this is a really pretty pencil and it works good. Just get rid of the metallic writing for crying out loud. This is the polychromos, which I know I am not alone in the frustration of how to read these pencils. <laughs> yeah, so you've got um, metallic name here and then on the back side you've got a color name in two different languages, a number, and it has a star value, which is their light fast rating right on the pencil. The print has, it's a serif print, so it's got a few more details to it, which makes it even harder to read. And the print, I believe, is a little smaller, yeah, than the Castle Arts pencil. So you've got the metallic, you've got a serif font, and a smaller font makes these super hard to read. <laughs> but it so, has light fast info, which is nice. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think they're both beautiful pencils, so I am going to give them both an X. <laughs> My scorecard, I get to do it how I want. How would you score it? I'm very curious. So, pencil appearance and info, they both do really good. Let's talk core size. Now, according to all the company literature, they both have a 3.8 millimeter core. But I recently purchased, finally, a digital caliper so that I can do some good, accurate, in-the-studio measurements. So let's get this beast out and see what they measure out to be. This is the beast that I purchased. It was on a really good sale, so I got it. It's a stainless hardened steel digital caliper with a uh, thumb screw and yeah, all this stuff. I'm still learning how to use it, you guys. I'm being totally honest here. I know you turn it on. That's your first step. You turn it on. And then you're supposed to close it all the way. Make sure the little jaws are all the way shut and that this says zero. If it doesn't say zero, then you can hit the zero button and it zeroes it out, okay? Then you can scroll it with your thumb like that to see the width that we reach here. Now this is a little tricky because how do you, Steve just asked this, how do you do this? How do you measure this when the pencil is sharpened? So what I look for 
is a pencil that um, has been sharpened well and has a pretty even, see how the wood is circular all the way around and it doesn't like go high on one side? That means the pencil's off-centered if it does that, or you sharpened it funky when you were sharpening it. So this is the one I'm going to use to measure the polychromos, and actually this one is pretty good too for the um, gold. So then you take your little calipers and you slide it down to right above where the wood is. You tighten it up and you look and see what it says. 3.96. So you're actually touching the core then. Yeah, I'm, I'm squeezing it not hard, you know, but I'm, I have scrolled the little thumb screw right up tight against the core and it's right resting above the... Um, yeah. wood. So that's the best way I know how to do this without actually hacking the pencil in half <laughs> or carving away all the wood, which I know I would mess up and carve some of the core. So that's the best way I know. So according to my digital calipers, which do have some variance to it, these come in at 3.96. So I'll write that down here. 3.96 according to Jennifer's calipers and it's this exact pencil. Okay, let's do the same test now. Scroll it down to zero. Make sure you're at zero. If you need to zero it out, you can again. And then scroll it open, and we'll do the same thing. Slide this over, and down right against the top of the wood, and tighten with the thumb screw, and that's what I get. 3.64. Now I could go through and measure several different pencils just to verify those measurements, but I'm going to write that down. 3.64. Okay, I'm going to measure a couple more just for science. So we tested a few more. So we've got three tests on the polychromos and three on the castle arts. And you can see the numbers, 3.64, 3.77, and 3.69. So none of them reached the 3.8. Over here we have, and this is supposed to be 3.8 as well. They're erring on the other side. It looks yes. like 3.96, 4.0, and a 3.87. So as far as the best core size, I'm going to give it to polychromos. They're more consistent and they're airing on a little bit bigger of a core than what they are promising us. That's cool. But that's not bad, you guys. For a budget brand, a core that's at this size is pretty good. And now that I have some good calipers, we're going to do more measurements like this with more head-to-head -head battles. And we can see just how consistent all brands are with this. Okay, number of colors available. Polychromos come in with 120. Why haven't they come out with more colors? I wish they would. <laughs> <laughs> but they come in at 120, and the um, gold is the same. They come in with 120. So they both get an X. Light fast statistics. Now, according to Polychromos, and I believe them, Fabric Castell is an old company that spent tons of money getting their products light fast tested. So we have statistics on the Polychromos for every single color in the line. And so, yeah, that's epic and really useful to a professional artist. Now, the gold, they just claim good light fastness. Let me show you. This is the pamphlet that comes with your gold pencils. Awesome pamphlet. Again, if you want to see me unbox these and my first impressions, there's a whole video dedicated to that. But inside here is where you get some of the actual pencil information. And one of them they talk about smear proof, they talk about waterproof, and then right here, high level of light fastness. They also throw in something about acid free. Um, the bonding of the pencils, that's something that Polychromos has been doing for ages. If you look at this little SV right there, that's what it, they're talking about. You can go learn more about the bonding process that they do to make the core glued into the um, casing, the wood. Um, so it sounds like um, they're claiming that they're doing something similar. We'll assume it's true. This high level of light fastness, um, 
I would take it with a grain of salt. In order to get actual real light fast ratings, they have to put it through a battery of tests in order to get that information. And I just, I don't believe it. <laughs> so I'm going to say that, you know, polychromos beats them hands down. This is a product that a professional artist doing a portrait that they want it to last for 50 years on a wall would reach for polychromos a hundred times better and more often than they would the gold. So, sorry. <laughs> you can't compete there. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the tests. Let me clean up. I've got calipers and booklets everywhere. Okay, so this section of our scorecard refers to this over here. So test one, which color swatches do you prefer? I'm going to hold this up. If you download this and you want to play along at home, um, give it a score. Which swatches do you prefer? The ones on the left and the ones on the right. Now remember, we're not talking about like, I like this red better than that red. That's not what we're discussing. It's just more the way they overall look. Steve, do you have a preference? You're my color man. Let me bring it down here so he can look at it. We're well, I, I prefer the look of the polychromos. They're just, you'll notice that they're smoother. The way they lay down, there's less like white dots showing through. Yeah. Um, so I think they just have better coverage. They're just a very pleasing, smooth look. And I like that a little better. Yep. I agree. But these are not bad, you guys. Oh, the I vibrancy have... is great on yeah, these. In fact, I... they remind me a little more of a wax pencil. Let's address that real quick. Um, color pencils are made up of a pigment, which is the color, and then they have binders and fillers and things to make it creamy and stick to your page. That can be oils, it can be waxes, and a whole bunch of other ingredients that I don't know of, <laughs> but they do a different ratio of all these different pigment to filler, wax to oil. So that's where this debate of oily versus wax comes in. Polychromos are famously known as some of the best oil-based color pencils for a professional artist out there. I don't think we could we even need to debate that. So what we're seeing here is I would guess there is more of an oil ratio to the polychromos and more of a waxy ratio to the ga the castle gold. That would and be I, my I guess if you're comparing castle gold to castle soft touch. Yeah. Then the gold I think do have, have a, a little higher more oil ratio. ratio. It's, it's like, terminology that they throw out because they know there's a whole bunch of us looking for oil-based pencils. It's like Brutfinner and yeah. all these others are starting to come out with oil. You know, yeah. I think they just jump on the marketing bandwagon. Yeah. So the only way to really know is to try them in your own. I mean, maybe there's a science thing where we can melt them down, but I don't have that ability. So, <laughs> so we have to take them for their word and then actually do the testing. And that's why you've come to me so that I can do this for you. So as far as that ratio goes, polychromos is more of an oil based than the Castle Gold. But like Steve said, Castle Gold is more oily compared to Castle Soft Touch. Got it? <laughs> so, which colors do I prefer? I'm going to give it to polychromos, but I am highly impressed with the colors on the Castle Art side. So, uh, yeah, for the cost, I mean, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Which white is most opaque on black? We have a whole color pencil video where I tested, I think it was 60 different white color pencils. In that test, we revealed that this white here for the polychromos is a terrible white as far as an opaque white. This is just one category here. So see, this one is covering much more of the black. So as far as a really good opaque white, between these two, then Castle Arts Gold wins that battle. It's a better opaque white. Which wax pencils tend to be more to opaque. To be more opaque. Yep. So that's a good proof right there. So I'm going to give Castle Arts an X for the best as far as opaque white. Which black has the truest black value? For that, we need to bring up our value scale. I'm just going to grab my standard color wheel here. And if you look at this inner ring right here, we have a value scale that helps me see the true black compared to more of a gray type version. So we're going to look at polychromos, which I must admit, 
Polychromos Black is one of my favorite black pencils of all time. <laughs> so let's see how it that. does. Yep. If I need a good black, I almost always reach for my Polychromos Black. Oh, Rose is, is being noisy here. She's got to fix her pillow. It's yeah. just not right. I bought her a new furry blanket to put up here. Like one of those fake fur Sherpa blanket things. And I need to bring it up. Oh, is everything better now? Are we good, Rose? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to let Steve help me with this. So what you do is you set it on top of your black swatch, and then you can rotate this. And I do the good old fashioned um, squint test where you squint your eyes and you look at the line between the two and see which one it sits with best. So I'm gonna let you guys vote. Would you give it a value one or a value two? It's definitely in between or it's somewhere in either value one or value two. It leans more to one than I expected. That's cool. Okay, now let's look over here. Rotate this around again, and we'll do the same thing. There's a lot of reasons why I like the Polychromos Black, and we're going to do an entire video dedicated to black color pencils one of these days. If that's interesting to you, let me know. It's a nice black. It's a really good black. So I'm going to give both an X because they're both beautiful blacks, and I would reach for either one. And someday I'll tell you why it would be this one that I would reach for, but not today. <laughs> so I'm going to give them both an X for having a really good black. Okay, which colors are the most visible on black? For that one, we have a test right here. And if you remember me doing that earlier, so I'm going to let you guys look. I'm going to move it in the light and Steve's going to have his secret vote for which one he thinks is most visible? Is it the polychromos or is it the castle art golds? Look at it straight down. Yeah. I'm moving it. I'm in really surprised actually that I think the polychromos. The polychromos. I agree. I think the polychromos are showing up better on the black. I'm wondering if it's a difference in pigment, a stronger, better pigment. Yeah. Because they're always so translucent that they usually yeah. lose the black battle. They're they're known for their true their translucency. Um, that's a property of the polychromos and something you can use to your advantage. But I think the Castle Arts Gold are just a little bit more translucent. They look good though. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna give the score to polychromos, which totally shocks me. I didn't expect that. I thought these guys would win that 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 particular X. Number five is highest number of layers. Okay, so this test here did a couple things for us. One was to see um, as you do light layers, which is typically how you color with color pencils when you're doing portraitures or other fine art. It's a lot of layering that you're doing. So you need a pencil that can lay down a lot of layers. At about layer four over here with the Castle Art Gold, I started to feel that I call it skating. It's like a, a waxy um, feeling. It's not necessarily that all of the tooth of the paper is filled up. I think it's just a building up of fillers, waxes, oils, whatever it is. It starts building up and makes it more and more difficult to lay down additional layers. It was about layer four that I was like, oh no, this is getting difficult over here with the Castle Arts. I managed to get nine layers. I had to push harder after layer four though. So we ended up with more of a medium pressure here. Over here we did eight layers, all light pressure, and I felt like I could have kept going. That's how good polychromos are at layering. It's amazing how good they are. So both are layerable. But this, you have to work harder at it to get rid of all or most of the white. And this one, you don't have to work as hard and you don't have that skating weird feeling you have of the buildup. So I'm gonna give Polychromos the win here on highest number of layers and the best layer ability in general. The crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> These guys have a crumb problem. And if you don't like crumbs in your color pencils, you're, you're going to be disappointed with the Castle Art Gold. It's not 
that excessive, but it's more excessive than I like. So I'm going to give the score to Polychromos because there's like almost zero crumbs with a Polychromos pencil. Pigments rub off onto hand. I think that for the color we tested and the way we tested it, I think the score has to go to gold. Yeah. Um, there seemed to be less red on my thumb, <laughs> on the gold thumb. Binders are least water soluble. So again, what we're looking for is a, these are not supposed to be water soluble. We want a pencil that will stay put even though if we use it for mixed media. So this is our Castle Arts test right here. And you can see how much pigment washed from the left over to the right. And this is the polychromos test. Now, this can be different depending on the color. If we had picked green, if we had picked um, a red, what would this have done? It would have probably been different. But for these two colors we picked, I think that polychromos won with the least water soluble. Yeah, they're pretty close. <clears throat> yeah, but there is a difference. Okay, test number nine was the blend test with Jennifer's rule of blending thirds. Now I ran into a bit of an issue right here. This is the Polychromos blend. This is the Castle Arts Gold. Again, this test tests how many layers you can lay down and the way they all blend and do their beautiful things. That red that we used was so pigmented, so powerful, I had a hard time holding it back, which to me is, I love pencils that are like that. I want to hold my pencils back. I don't want to be working really hard and scrubbing with my pencils. This one, again, it was about layer three or layer four, which is how many layers are on this side. I started feeling that skating, and I had to push so hard to get it to lay down a really good true red right here. So yes, they are both very blendable, beautiful blends. This one was just harder to create that blend. I had to push harder and work harder. Do you think those... Every time you do this I, with these pencils, I keep seeing some of those white dots. Do you think those are the crumbs getting in the way? Like they crumb and then you're coloring over it. And then could when you be. brush the crumb off, the white shows. It could be. Because yeah. I had to push really hard and there's still a white spot over here. There are ways to get rid of all those white speckles if that bugs you with color pencils. This isn't a good video to teach that. I've taught it in other videos and as a Bliss partner, if you decide to join us over there for the hundreds of hours of workshops, we give you lots of different ideas of how to get rid of those white speckles. So as far as the blend test with Jennifer's Rule of Blending Thirds, I'm going to win it to Polychromos because I felt like the colors blended beautifully, they layered beautifully, and if anything, I was holding them back. <laughs> Where over here, I was pushing and forcing and really working hard to get that pretty blend. Sharpens easily to a point. Polychromos wins this hands down. We had one problem with one tip broken during sharpening over on the poly on the gold <laughs> the Castle Arts gold. So I yeah, I've I've had some sharpening issues as I've been working with these pencils. Not as many issues though as with the Castle Arts soft touch. So if you're comparing gold to soft touch, um, the gold wins this hands down. But polychromos, I don't know if I've ever had a polychromos break. Like, ever. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, so polychromos wins for easy to sharpen. Holds a sharp point without excessive sharpening. The polychromos wins this hands down as well. Um, it just holds a point longer. I think it's that formula, that oily um, formula doesn't lay down as much core with every stroke. Well, it makes sense, just the crumbliness of the castle arch. You know, you would think that yeah. that's, that core is falling apart. It's falling apart and product is being wasted in those crumbs, basically. Yeah. Okay, easy on the hand when coloring. I think I've already covered this enough, but this test alone showed me that this one was way easier and I didn't have to really push and work hard to get that gorgeous red on the far right, where over here I had to work really hard to get that blend. Again, we are comparing two really good lines of color pencils, and so we're saying good and better. 
is what we're saying. A good blend, better blend, like that. Good and best. Good, ex- best yeah, better and best. Or, yeah. So this was a better experience, although both were a good experience. Okay, now we get to tally up all of our X's. And I think just as a glance, you can see who's going to win, but I'm still going to do the math. Okay, so Polychromos came in with a whopping score of 17, and Gold got 7. So it's pretty evident which one, if I had the two sets sitting in front of me and I wanted to color, which set would I probably reach for? <laughs> <laughs> it would be the Polychromos. Um, but this is somewhat subjective. Again, if we're talking about my area, my experience with the pencils. This one is a huge budget jump. How many sets of gold can you get for one set of polychromos, you guys? A lot. So this is, uh, you know, pretty difficult battle. We're taking a high professional artist grade pencil and putting it up against a Chinese budget brand. It's not very <laughs> but we're not here for fair. We're here for a head-to-head -head battle, and Polychromos won. All right, are you surprised? No. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised either that Polychromos won. It really was an unfair battle, but it was very interesting. Side by side, it was fun to feel the differences, hear the differences between the two pencils, and now we know. Yes, if you have the budget, of course, polychromos are the ones to buy. But if you have a smaller budget and a $65 set of pencils to get 120 colors is more your zone, I think these are a pretty good option. I'm pretty impressed. Hey, thank you for joining us. Don't forget, we're giving this set away to one of you. Not this set, this is mine, but a brand new set to one of you. So follow the link in the video description and get your entries in for the big Castle Arts color pencil giveaway. I'm so excited. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations, Polychromos. And I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye everyone.